Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to take a look at Lesson 4-5, Introduction to Parallel Lines. Okay. Um, like I said before, we're skipping Lesson 4-4 four, four for now. We'll come back to it later in the week. So four things you should um, understand by the time you finish the video is one, can you recognize planes? Uh, two, can you recognize transversals? Three, can you identify pairs of angles formed by transversals? And four, um, can you recognize parallel lines? Okay, so a lot of the first part here is already filled in for you. So definition, a plane is a surface such that if any two points on the surface are connected by a line, all points of the line are also on the surface. So in general, in this classroom here, if you look around, the paper that you're writing on is a plane. It's a surface. Okay, we talked about planes a little bit before. Um, the ceiling is a plane. The front wall is a plane, etc. But again, if you have any two points, if you make two dots on your paper, like the smart board here, if I were to make two dots on the board, and because of that concept here, all points of the line are also on this plane or on this board. So if I would take my writing utensil and draw a line that connects the plane here, draw a line that connects the points, this line is in the plane and every point on the line is in this plane as well. Okay, so if I'm continuing on here, the next definition, it says if points, lines, segments, etc. lie in the same plane, we call them coplanar. Okay, so again, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, if they're in the same plane, they are considered to be coplanar. So every dot in the ceiling tile is coplanar because they're all in the same plane. Okay, now on the other hand, points, lines, segments, etc. that do not lie in the same plane are non coplanar. So again, if they're in the same plane, they're coplanar. If they're not in the same plane, they're non coplanar. So again, hopefully everybody's good so far. So as we continue on here, the third one, this is where we're going to fill some stuff out here. So it says a transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines in distinct points. Now, coplanar, or I'm sorry, transversal does not look like the asterisk. Because again, in this situation, it's intersecting in the same point at the center right here in the middle. Okay, so this is an example of not a transversal. So again, a transversal is a line. So in this picture, my line is line T. If I can get it to work here. Okay, it intersects two other lines. So A and B in different points. One here and one there. Okay, so talking about this then. For the interior is the region between lines A and B. So if I'm looking at this picture the interior would be in, in the section between them. Okay, so this is the interior. The exterior, it would make sense then to think of it as the region outside lines A and B. So I know I keep erasing when I redraw here. So again, the interior would be the region between them. This is the interior and the exterior would be outside of them. So out here is the exterior, out here as well is your exterior. Those are your regions. Now the reason we talk about that is because we have some different pairs of angles that are gonna come up. For example, the next one is alternate interior angles. So if I'm picking for alternate interior angles with the word, they should be interior. So I should be out of this middle region there. If I talk about alternate exterior angles, those are going to be angles above or below. So again, using that terminology, if I understand the different regions, it'll help me with what I'm picking. Okay, so let's continue on here. Like I said, I started talking here ahead of myself here. So we have pa uh, different pairs of angles that are formed by transversals. Okay, we're going to get into some today, and we're going to talk about some others as we continue on with this chapter as well. So the first pair we're going to talk about are alternate interior angles. Now, alternate interior angles are angles that have to be formed, again, by two lines in a transversal, and there are three things that have to be true here. One is they have to be in the interior of the figure. Okay, they can't be exterior angles. 
And again, there's going to be two angles we're talking about, so they're a pair. So again, we have to pick from interior angles. So that's criteria number one. Criteria number two is that they have to lie on alternate sides of the transversal. So if one's on the left, the other one has to be on the right. If one's above the transversal, the other one has to be below. Again, on alternate sides of the transversal. And the third criteria is they must have different vertices. They cannot be what we call adjacent to each other right next to each other for that matter as well. So again, three criteria for alternate interior angles. They have to be in the interior of the figure, they have to lie on alternate sides of the transversal, and they have to have different vertices. So if I scroll down a little bit, I know some of you might be still writing and that's okay. So we have this picture at the bottom. It says line FE and line CD are cut by transversal AB. So if I'm naming the pairs of alternate interior angles, Okay, so for one, if they're alternate interior, I have to pick from interior angles. So if my two lines are like this, the interior is between them. So I have options of angles 2, 3, 7, and 6. Those are the angles that are between your two lines here. Those are my only choices. Okay, so if I can erase this so we can see it. So for interior angles, if we have, again, 2, 3, 6, and 7 to pick from, they have to be on alternate sides of the transversal. So if I talk about angle 2, okay, you see how 2 is above my transversal here. So if I have to pick an uh, alternate interior to it, I have to pick one below the transversal. So I have choices of 6 or 7. But do you see that 2 and 7 have the same vertex? So my alternate interior angle would have to be 6. 2 and 6 have different vertices. The vertex for 2 is right here, and the vertex for angle 6 is over there. Okay, now we do have another pair of alternate interior angles. So we said another alternate inter another interior angle in the picture is angle 3. Okay, it's an interior angle. So if I'm going to pick an alternate interior angle with that, notice 3 is above your transversal, so my other one has to be below. And again, they have to have different vertices, so I'm going to pick angle 3 and angle 7. Now, a side note. If I'm trying to look for alternate interior angles in the picture, a lot of times we talk about it in terms of a letter. So do you see how angle 3 and angle 7, if I trace it, kind of makes like a zigzag. Those are alternate interior angles. If I turn it sideways, maybe you'd see the letter Z. The same can be said about angles 2 and 6. They make a weird looking Z or a zigzag, but you do have that in the figure. So again, alternate interior angles in the picture are angles 2 and 6 and angles 3 and 7. Okay, so if we continue on here. Next we have our alternate exterior angles. Okay, so whereas alternate interior angles have to be in the interior, you would assume that alternate exterior angles have to be and the exterior of the figure. Okay, I apologize, my boxes are off here a little bit. So again, alternate exterior angles have to be in the exterior of the figure. They have to lie on alternate sides of the transversal. So just like before, if one is above the transversal, the other one has to be below. If one's on the left side of the transversal, the other one has to be on the right, etc. And just like alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles have to have different vertices as well. Okay, so if we look at our picture, the last one we looked at, we had to name a pair of alternate interior angles. This time, we're going to name a pair of alternate exterior angles. So again, the exterior region in our picture, if I can get the technology to work here, is going to be the ones on the right and the left. Because FE and CD are my two lines, my transversal is AB. So again, if I'm going to name alternate exterior angles, let's erase them so I can see a little bit better. So my choices are 1, 8, 4, and 5 to pick from. So if I start with angle 1, okay, angle 1 is an exterior angle. So if I want an alternate exterior to that, I'm not going to pick 8 because 8 has the same vertex, so I have to pick 5. So angle 1 and 5 are alternate exterior angles. 
Another pair in the picture are going to be 4 and angle 8. Notice 4 is an exterior angle, 8 is as well, 4 is above the transversal, 8 is below, and they have different vertices. Okay. So the last one we're going to take a look at today, pairs of angle-wise, is going to be corresponding angles. So if I scroll down. Okay, corresponding angles are a little bit different. Okay, so again, you have to have two lines and a transversal, and these are the four criteria. One must be an interior angle. The other must be an exterior angle. So when we talk about alternate interior angles, they both had to be interior. Or when we talked about alternate exterior, they both had to be exterior angles. So corresponding is one of each. One is an interior, one is an exterior. Okay, they have to be on the same side of the transversal. So they're both on the right or both on the left. Or maybe both above the transversal or both below. And they have to have different vertices, just like the other two pairs we talked about already. So again, quick summary. One angle must be in the interior of the figure. One must be in the exterior of the figure. They have to lie on the same side of the transversal, and they have to have different vertices. So that's the four things that must be true about your corresponding angles. Okay, so again, we're going to look at the same picture we looked at the two previous pictures for the alternate interior and alternate exterior. Same picture, we're just looking for corresponding. So if we pick an angle, let's just pick any angle in the picture. So first one that comes to mind to me, since I'm doing the notes for you, is angle one. Okay, so angle one, hopefully you realize, is an exterior angle. So that means the other corresponding with angle one has to be an interior angle. So my picks are two, seven, three, and six. Okay, it has to be on the same side of the transversal. So in this picture, my transversal is still segment AB. It tells me over here. So do you see how angle one is above the transversal? So I gotta pick an angle above the transversal. So it has to be two or three, because again, one is exterior, so my other one has to be interior. Now, uh, last, it has to have different vertices. So if I'm choosing between two and three, I have to pick angle three because two and one have the same vertex. Now, another way to talk about corresponding angles is in reference to their position, to be honest with you. So if I had to describe, out of this group of four on the left, if I had to describe angle one, I would say it's in the top left position. So if I look at my other group of four, which one's in the top left? It would be angle three. So angle one and three are corresponding. So now there's more than one pair of corresponding angles in the picture. Another pair is angles two and four. Two's interior, four is exterior. They're both above the transversal and they have different vertices. As well as two is in the top right position, angle four is in the top right position. Another pair of corresponding angles in the picture is going to be angle eight and angle six. Okay. Eight's an exterior, six is an interior. They're both below the transversal and have different vertices. Or you can think of it as eight is in the bottom left out of that group of four, six is in the bottom left. So that works. And the last pair of corresponding angles in the picture is going to be angle seven and angle five. Okay, seven is an interior angle, five is an exterior, so we've got one of each. They're both below the transversal and they have different vertices. So, moving on to a couple examples here. We're going to identify the angles in the picture, the numbered angles. So we've got three different angles we're going to look at, or three different examples. So in the first one, we've got angles one and two. So if you're struggling with this, I would take out some colored pencils, if need be, and trace the angles. So here's angle one, and here's angle two. Now, if we extend the pictures a little bit, whoop, whoop and extend our transversal a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you see your two lines and you have your transversal running through the middle. So in that picture, based on how I'm looking at it, angle, so if I'm looking at the regions, the interior region is in the middle here, right? The exterior region would be out here. So angles one and two are both in the interior, 
Okay, so we have to think in our mind, okay, they're alternate interior or they're alternate exterior. They're one of the two. Since, or I'm sorry, they're all, they're, the, let me rephrase that again. Let's start over. So since they're in the interior region between the two lines, their alternate interior angles really is the only choice we have because corresponding angles are one of each. Notice in the picture that angle one is, let's see here, changing colors. Angle one here is above the transversal and angle two here is below. So again, that's another point to make here. These are alternate interior angles. And I probably should have talked about this before. We abbreviate ALT for alternate, INT for interior, and then again, of course, we have our angle symbol. Okay, so continuing on. Problem, the second one. So if I trace the angles, here's angle three, here's angle four. So again, if I need to extend my lines, I can extend them up and down and to connect them. So notice, angles three and four are both exterior angles. They're both outside your lines. Three is above the transversal, four is below. So again, this is an example of alternate exterior angles. EXT for exterior abbreviation in this one. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a moment, make sure everybody's caught up. Okay, let's take a look at the last picture on this side then. So we have two pairs of angles we're looking at, angles six and five, and then seven and eight as well. So again, if we trace them, I'm gonna trace angles six and five first and extend my lines. So here's angle six, here's angle five. So if I'm looking at six and five, notice five is an interior angle, six is an exterior angle, so they're one of each. Um, notice they're in corresponding positions, okay? So five and six are going to be, so angles five and six are corresponding angles, and we abbreviate corresponding as C-O-R-R -R for corresponding. Now, we also have angles seven and eight in the picture. So if I trace them with a different color, let's go with maroon. Here's eight and here's seven. So again, if I need to, if I extend my lines, notice seven and eight are both interior angles and they're both on opposite sides of the transversal. So seven and eight are alternate interior angles. Okay, so we have one more thing to go over today and that is the definition of parallel lines. So parallel lines, by definition, are coplanar lines that do not intersect. Okay, you've seen parallel lines a lot. A lot of kids talk about parallel lines and being railroad tracks. So in this picture, we have the one on the left, we have A is parallel to B. Notice this is the symbol we have for parallel. Looks like the number 11, it means parallel. And notice, it's kind of faint here on the board, but we use arrows to show parallel lines in the picture. In the picture on the right, we have line AB is parallel to line CD, and again, we have arrows to indicate that. Okay, so again, parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. Okay, so I have one always, sometimes, or never question. Okay, so if we take a look at that one. So it says, uh, always, sometimes, or never explain your answer. It says, lines that do not intersect are parallel. So I'll give you a moment to think about it. Lines that do not intersect are parallel. So most of you are going to say, well, yeah, that's an always. Lines that do not intersect are parallel. But here's the key thing here. It does not say that they're coplanar here. It just says lines. Okay, lines. Lines that do not intersect are parallel. So if you're talking about a plane, that works. That's an always. But the problem is we're not always talking about a plane. Okay, so see if you can come back tomorrow and be able to explain to me why lines that do not intersect 
are not always parallel. We'll just leave it at that for today. Can you think of an actual example? Maybe, I don't know, in the classroom, etc., where you have lines that do not intersect but are actually not parallel to each other. So think about that. I'm telling you the answer is sometimes. Can you think of an example when it's not true? Okay. So for your assignment today, you can see it on the last page of your notes here, um, page 196, you've got numbers 1 through 5. Okay, so I expect you, you've got some time left to class to so start working on your homework. Stay on task, get your work done, and tomorrow I'll go over any questions that you still have. Have a great day!